We're talking about 2.5 dividing rational numbers. This will be the last new idea that we have in chapter two, okay? And then we're gonna have a quiz over this whole packet of chapter two notes on Monday coming up. All right, so the past couple days we have been talking about this word reciprocal. Remember, that's where you flip the fraction. So guys, what would the reciprocal of three-fourths be? Four thirds. Four thirds. Please write that in your notes. Now we are going to do a few examples of reciprocals. Some look as easy as this, and some are a little bit more difficult. Let's look at the first one, three-fifths. MJ, what would three-fifths reciprocal be? Five-thirds. Five-thirds is correct. And box your answer in. Let's go to the right. Two. That is not a fraction. I need it to become a fraction. So what should I put that over? Regan? One. Put it over a one. And now what would your reciprocal be? One half. One half is correct. Maddie, problem C says seven tenths. What would that be for the reciprocal? Ten sevenths is correct. The next one is one of those more difficult ones. It's a mixed number. I would first have to turn that into an improper fraction. Jocelyn, what would that be as an improper fraction? Nine over two. Nine over two, very good. And now tell me, what would that reciprocal be? Two. two over nine. Okay, so today we are going to be using reciprocals for our lesson over 2.5. We are also going to be talking about KFC. Raise your hand if you've had KFC before. All right, KFC is not the only chicken place. What other places are there that are out there that sell chicken? Popeyes. Popeyes. Chick-fil-A. Zaxby's. Okay, all of those are awesome. But today, we are only talking about KFC. Everyone say KFC. KFC. Keep, flip, change. Keep, flip, change. I want you to pull out your red pens and fill in this section of your notes. All right, so a couple ideas here from today's lesson that we want to make sure we take away. First off, you are never allowed to divide a fraction, okay? So here you wrote down, you can't divide fractions, ever. From now until the end of your life, you're not allowed to divide fractions. Instead, what does it tell us we have to do? Very good. You will always have to multiply by the reciprocal in order to figure out this division kind of problem down here. So it says one half divided by three fourths. Once again, you're not allowed to divide fractions. That's where KFC comes in. Everyone say KFC. KFC. Keep, flip, change. Keep, flip, change. All right. So we're going to keep the first one right now. Just put a little arrow. Keep the first one, which is one half. Flip the second one. So three fourths will become four-thirds, and then you have to change the operation. Because I'm not allowed to divide, what's the opposite of divide? Multiply. multiply. So we will change the operation to multiply. Now you are allowed to multiply fractions, we just can't divide them. Jacoby, is there anything I can cross-reduce here? Uh, you can cross-reduce the two. And what do they become? Uh, both two. What does the two become? A 1, and then the 4 becomes a 2. Now multiply that across. Now that we have reduced as much as we can, what would that be multiplied across, class? Um, 2. 2 over? 2 over, three. 2 over 3. And box that in. All right, so this is how a few of our problems today are going to look. All right, find the quotient. Remember, we are not allowed to divide fractions, so we're gonna use the KFC method. Luke, what should I do when using the KFC method for problem A? Keep which one? You keep the first. Keep the first one. Flip which one? The second one, so that becomes three over two. And change the operation. The divide becomes a? Multiply. Multiply. Is there anything I can cross-reduce? Very good. What do they become? And then nine Excellent. Now I'd like you to multiply across. And you get five over six. Fantastic. Five sixth. Can five six be reduced, class? No. no. All right. You're always going to ask yourself that at the end. Is there any way to reduce it? And there was not. Let's go to the next one, Abby. What should I do for KFC? Remember, we cannot divide fractions, so we've got to KFC it. Keep the first one, which is six over, five. six over five. 
flip the second one, which would be? Okay, very good. And we're going to keep that negative and change the operation to? Instead of, hold on, right here. Instead of divide, we're going to multiply. All right, now cross-reducing. What are we doing? Very good. Okay, so in this case, it was not that a 4 could go into a 6 or a 6 can go into a 4, but there is a number that can go into a 6 and into a 4. What number can go into both of them? Two. A 2. So that's how we get this. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. 4 divided by 2 equals 2, and that's how she cross-reduced. All right, now let's look at this whole thing. Abby, is our answer going to be positive or negative? Very good. There was only one negative in the original problem. That's an odd number of negatives, so our answer is going to be negative. Back to Abby. Let's multiply the numerators together. What do you get? Oh, sorry. Nine. Nine. Then multiply the denominators together, and what do you get? Ten. Very good. So your final answer is? Nine negative nine-tenths is correct. All right, for the next part... We're going to start with our first number right here. I'm going to pretend the negatives aren't there. We'll look at the negatives here in just a bit. But thinking of our final answer, is this answer going to be a positive or a negative answer? Positive. It will be a positive, okay? So right now we're just going to pretend these negative signs are not there, and we'll think about it being a positive at the end. We'll start with the first number, 8.4. Divided by, okay, so you're always going to put that little divided by sign on top of the first number, 3.6. Now, this is something you've learned before, but this number out here is not allowed to have a decimal point. So do you guys know what I have to do with that decimal point? What do I do, Luke? You have to, you, uh, have to move it. You are correct. You move it like, to, you move it how many times until it's like out of the way. Good job. You move it however many times until it's out of the way. How many times do I need to move this one? I only need to move it one time. I want you to take your red pen and go like this. That little scoop is basically showing me I've moved my decimal point to behind the six. But I've got to be fair. If I do it to that number, I also have to do it to this number. And then the decimal point goes right there at the end. Take your red pens, put them back at the top of your desk, and we're going to rewrite this problem. Now it's going to say 84 divided by 36. Because I'm dealing with decimals here, I am going to have a decimal answer. So if you would, just add your decimal point and add three zeros to the end of this problem. Now let's do some rounding here. This number 36, if I were to round it up, what would that become? 40. A 40. Let's just estimate or guess, how many times can a 40 go into an 84? Twice. Twice, okay? So we're going to take our best guess and put a 2 on top. 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 3 is 6, add that 1, which is 7. Let's subtract this. Ellie, 4 minus 2? 8 minus 7? 1. Class, is this 12 smaller than the 36? Yes. Yes, because it is, we can bring down that 0. Now remember, we are trying to think of this 36 as a 40. We're rounding it up to take our best guess how many times do you guys think that 36 can go into this 120? Three. three times. That looks like a good guess to me. Let's multiply. Three times six is 18. Three times three is nine plus one is 10. Let's subtract it. When you subtract it, Jocelyn, what do you get? All right, we get a 12. The 12 is smaller than the 36. Let's bring down a zero. How many times can the 36 go into 120? Three, Three times, once again. Do you guys see any kind of a pattern here? Yeah. Yes, look, it's gonna keep coming where I keep getting 12 and bringing down a zero, okay? Do you think it's ever gonna end? No. I don't think it is either. What is that decimal called if it keeps going? A, repeat. a repeating decimal. So I don't want to box in my answer up here. I'm going to write it off to the side, but instead of writing 2.33333333, someone raise your hand and tell me what I am going to do. Autumn, what will I do? Very good. Should I put my repeating sign like that, class? 
No. No, why not? Because it's only repeating three. Correct. Only the three is repeating, so I'm only going to put that decimal on top of the three. And then when we said beforehand, it was a negative divided by a negative, so our answer has to be a positive. Very good job. Let's look at problem D. Is this going to be a positive or a negative answer? Negative. It will be a negative because there's only one negative sign there. So write that first number first, 2.4, divided by 3.2. Remember, you are not allowed to have any decimal points on that number over there on the left side. So, Jacoby, what should I do with my decimal point? Um, we, should move it to the right. we should move it to the right. Guys, take your red pen. Show me with these little scoops that you are moving it to the right. Then put your red pen down, and we are going to rewrite this problem to the side. 24 divided by 32. Remember, put your decimal point at the end, and how many zeros do we like to add? Three. We're going to add three. Sometimes you might use them, sometimes you might not. All right, and that's okay. Bring the decimal point up. Does anyone have a guess of how many times a 32 might go into this 240 right here. Okay, the two best guesses that I just heard were seven and eight, okay? Here's what I want you to think about. A 32 is similar to a 30, right? And if a 30 was trying to go into a 240, it would go in eight times. But a 32 is bigger, which means an eight would be too big. So what would be our best guess? Seven. A seven. Let's try a seven up on top. 7 times 2, class? 14. 14. 4 on bottom, 1 on top. 7 times 3? 21. Plus 1? 22. 22. Let's subtract this. The 4 becomes a 3, and the 0 becomes a 10. Autumn, 10 minus 4? 6. 6, 3 minus 2? One class is the 16 smaller than that 32. Yeah. Yes, bring down the zero. Now we've got another guessing thing here. Remember, 32 is similar to 30. What's your best guess of how many times a 30 would go into 160? Show me with your fingers what you think. I see a lot of fives. That would be my best guess also. So let's put a five on top. Luke, five times two. Zero on bottom, one on top, five times three? Plus one? 16. Guys, what's 160 minus 160? Zero. zero. And remember, whenever we get that zero at the end, we are very happy because that means our problem is done. Can I box it in up top? No. No, we're going to rewrite it over here, and this is when we reflect, should my answer be a positive or a negative? Negative. It is a negative because there was only one negative number in the original problem. Any questions on how we did finding the quotient? All right. Excellent. Let me have you guys turn your page to the back side. This will be our final paper here in 2.5. Evaluate the expression when x equals 3 fifths and y equals 10. Repeat after me. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Excellent. Ellie, what am I plugging in for y? 10. Everybody write a 10. And then we're going to divide the x. Ellie, what is the x? 3 over, 3 over 5. Now, this is difficult when I have a whole number and a fraction, so let's turn them both into fractions. Ellie, how do I turn the 10 into a fraction? Put it over 1. Class, am I allowed to divide fractions? No. no. What method do I have to use? Uh, KFC. What does KFC stand for? Keep flip, change. All right, everybody keep the first one. So we're going to rewrite 10 over 1. Flip the second one. What does the second one become? 5 over 3. And change the operation to multiply. multiply. If I'm looking right here, is there anything that I can cross multiply? No. no. How about this way? No. no. That means all I can do is multiply across. Regan, what's 10 times 5? 50. What's 1 times 3? Very good. Am I allowed to keep this as my answer? No. Why not? Because it's improper. It's improper. We cannot leave it improper. So 50 over 3 means what? Um, 50, divided by three. 50 divided by 3. We're trying to figure out how many times a 3 can go into a 50. Okay? We can see here 1 times 3 is 3. 
6 times 3 is 18. Now, let's think about this. Should I make this a decimal or keep it as a fraction? Keep it as a fraction. Here's why. I started with fractions, which means my answer needs to come out as a fraction, okay? So my whole number here is 16, and what's the fraction? Two thirds. And two thirds. Is this answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. It is positive. Box it in. I want you guys to try problem B on your own. You're going to plug in what X is and then use KFC to help you on that problem. All right, guys, what did you plug in for X? Three-fifths, good job. Then we have to keep that first one, flip the second one, and change the operation. Jonathan, did you cross-reduce anything? Yes, what do the fives become? A one. MJ, when you multiply that together, what do you get? Three over, very good. Can I leave it like that? No. no, when you guys, some of you did it in your head, some of you did it to the side, what did you get when you did this? One, one. one and one half. Is this answer a positive or a negative answer? Positive. It is a positive one and one half. This asks us to find the mean of the data set. Do you guys know what that word mean means? What's it mean? has not to do with the opposite of being unkind. The mean means the? Average. The average. Okay. So in order to find the average of something, do you guys know how to find the average? Yes. You have to add up all the numbers, okay, and then divide. So that's what we're going to do with this data set. That's all that the mean means is to find the average. So we're going to work on this over here off to the side, and we're adding these numbers up together. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I'm finding the average is just go back through and double check, make sure that you wrote all those numbers down correctly. When you see that you did, then it's time to start adding them together. Here we go, four plus six. Ten. Plus one. Eleven. Plus two. Fourteen. Thirteen. Plus six. Nineteen. Nineteen plus two. <coughs> Twenty-one plus five. Plus 2, 28. 28. 8 on bottom, 2 on top. Add all those numbers together, and what do you get? Okay, so that would be a 10, 108. Is that my average, or is that my mean? No. no. Instead, you have to take that and divide it by, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers in my data set. So I have to take 108 divided by 9. I want you guys to write this little fraction there so that you understand where you're getting the answer. Guys, what's 108 divided by 9? 12. 12. That is what the mean is of the data set in blue. Here's another way you can tell. You want to take the smallest number. What's the smallest number in that blue data set? Four. Four. What's the biggest number? 22. 22. You want to make sure that your answer is somewhere in between the smallest and the biggest number. Is it? Yeah. That is. Okay, so 12 is the mean of that data set. All right, so guys, when you did this on your own and you added the green numbers together, what did you get when you added it? When you added it? 30. Divide it by how many numbers are in the data set? Five. Six of them. So what's the average? Five. Five is correct. All right. Does that come in between the smallest number one and the biggest number ten? Yes. Yes. That's a good sign. Very good. All right. For our modeling real life, a restaurant launches a mobile app that allows customers to rate their food on a scale from negative five to five. So if a customer really liked the food, what number do you think they'd give it? Five. 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 If they hated it, what would they give it? Negative five. Negative five. Okay. So far, the customers have given the lasagna scores of, and you can see the different scores that they gave them right there. 
The question it's asking us is, should the restaurant consider changing the recipe? So what we want to do is we want to find the average or the mean of all these scores right here. The best way for us to do that, we're going to add. Now, it can be tricky if you are adding a positive and a negative, and then a positive and a negative, and like that. So instead, what I'd like us to do is add all the positive numbers together, and then add all the negative numbers together. So everybody underline 2.25. That's the first positive number I see. What's the next positive number you see? Okay, zero is really neither positive nor negative, so let's not add that in. What's the next positive number? All right, everybody underline 1.75. And the next one? 3.5. Now let's circle the negative numbers. What's the first negative number you see? Negative 3.5. What's the next one? Negative 4.5. Very good. And the last one? Negative 2.5. Oh, sorry, there's actually two of them. Negative 1 and negative 2.5. Good job, guys. So here, we need to line up the decimal points when we add and subtract. So let's just focus on our positive numbers for right now. We've got 2.25, 1.75, and 3.5. Let's put a zero as a placeholder there at the end. You guys add those up together on your own. All right, when you guys added that, what'd you get? 10.50. All right, 7.50. Was this positive or negative? Positive. That is positive. Now let's focus on adding up all these negatives. Remember, same sign, add and keep. We're going to add the numbers and keep the sign. We have a 3.5, a 4.5. What should I do with this 1? There you go. 1.0. And then finally, 2.5. I want you guys to add those negative numbers together. All right, when you added those together, what did you get? 11.5. Now remember, those are our negative numbers, so that should be negative 11.5. What I want to do now is combine these two, okay? We're adding them all together. Same sign or different sign? Different, different signs. So we're going to do different signs, subtract, and take. The bigger absolute value is the 11.5, so I'll put that number on the top and subtract 7.5. When you do that, you'll get 4.0. But remember, we want to take the sign of the larger number, which was a negative. a negative. So we have negative 4.0 or negative 4. I'm still not finished because if you remember, when we try to find the average of something, we add up all the numbers, which is what we just did, and then divide by the number of numbers in the data set, including the zero that somebody gave this company. How many people voted? Eight, eight people. So we are going to take negative four divided by eight. Can that be reduced at all? No. Yes. 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 There's a number that can go into a four that can also go into an eight. What is it? A two can. What's bigger? A four. What's four divided by four? One. What's eight divided by four? Two. Two. And that was a negative fraction before, so it's still a negative fraction, okay? So the overall average of all these eight people, the score was a negative half. Here's the question. Should the restaurant consider changing their recipe, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. Can someone please explain to me why this restaurant should consider changing their recipe? Jonathan, I think you got it right there. The overall average is a negative score, okay? So if the score is below zero or if it's a negative, that really means people do not like it. All right, so we've said here the overall score is a negative. Obviously, if they're in the negative direction, that means the majority of the people are not enjoying the lasagna. So tonight's homework is 2.5. There are nine problems, okay? And then also remember, you need to bring your poster board tomorrow so that you can work on your timeline events paper, all right? If you would, when you go home, take that purple paper that I've given back to you, type up those sentences, and then when you come on Thursday and Friday, please bring things to work on on your poster since I'm giving you in-class time to work on your project.